Praise the Lord. We rise up as we pray together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We bless your name because of the way you are preparing your people to be more than conquerors. We are praying, O oh Lord, that nobody in this camp and any of the council we are hearing the word together will go back home weak in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that the might of the Lord and the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord will come and impact every life in Jesus' name. Amen. That in the battles of life, we will all win the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking, Lord, that that spirit of the conqueror that wages the war against the enemy and wins every time, you grant to every one of us in Jesus name I will pray that on the final day when the Lord shall come none of us will miss our crown in Jesus name we we'll fight to win and we are going to win the crown we we'll thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray thank you very much you can sit down for our final message tonight we're looking at winning the conqueror's crown winning the conqueror's crown there is a crown to be won and that is why the lord is making conquerors out of christians he wants us to be so militant and so triumphant that at the end of the day when he gives out reward there will be crowns for everyone crown of righteousness and the crown of life and the crown of glory i'm reading from first corinthians chapter 9 verse 25 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 25 and every man that strives for the mastery is temperate self-controlled and disciplined in all things now they do each to obtain or to win a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible that means that the lord is helping us and giving us the grace that although the people of the world are doing what they do they discipline themselves they deny themselves they fight according to the rules so that they can win a corruptible temporary crown but we are winning an incorruptible crown that is eternal in james chapter 1 reading from verse 12 james chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 12 it talks about another kind of crown that we want to win spoken about the incorruptible crown here we are in james chapter 1 verse 12 blessed is the man that endure temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life when he's tried examined and tested and he doesn't fall he doesn't give in he doesn't give up he doesn't say i'm tired i cannot go on anymore he breaks it through and is able to stand in all the challenges of life and when he wins that victory the bible says that he's going to win the crown of life which the lord has promised to them that love him and jesus is talking to you and talking to me and talking to the old church in revelation chapter 3 revelation chapter 3 it says in verse 11 behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown that's the reason why we have been talking about continuing with the lord being consistent with the lord not allowing temptation persecution trial slander misrepresentation the lies of men of false doctrine to shift you from your very base to hold on to what you have and to hold on to all the teachings of the word of god and to hold on to all the christian experiences you have that at no time will you let go so that you'll be able to win this crown that no man take thy crown what does it take to win to win the crown to win the incorruptible crown to win the conqueror's crown what does it take it is quite a lot of things i'm going to divide the message to three parts number one the cross before the crown 
the cross before the crown there are some people that do not think about the cross about steadfastness about yielding to the lord about absolute surrender to the lord about moving on and going on in spite of all the persecution all the pressure all the trial all the testing all the temptation they just fall by the wayside they think that because they raised up their hands in the crusade or they came to a deeper life retreat an altar call was made and then they came forward they think that is all but we need to remind ourselves that there is the cross before the crown there are some people they have painted the christian life as if there is no challenge at all there's no problem at all when the lord is by your side there is nothing for you to contend with there's no battle there's no conflict you just sail on and sail on and sail on it is not true the lord is telling us tonight that if we're going to win the crown there is a cross before the crown number two the consecration of the conqueror show me a soldier that's on the battlefield and he doesn't lay everything down for the defense of his nation it's not going to be a good soldier and show me a soldier in the kingdom of god that has no consecration no commitment doesn't lay anything down there's no self-denial and there's no absolute surrender of his life his heart his property and his will unto the lord it's not going to be a conqueror if we're going to be conquerors in the lord the lord is telling us there is the consecration there is a commitment and there is the sacrifice to be a conqueror the consecration of the conqueror number three our coronation and our crown when on the final day when the battle is over when all the challenges are over and when all the things we contain with today when everything is over and then we come on victoriously and triumphant at the end of the day there is the coronation and there is the crown i come back to number one the cross before the crown the cross before the crown we're coming back to first corinthians chapter 9 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that ye may obtain that is you look at the principles of scripture you look at the precepts of scripture you look at the commandments of the word of god you hold on to those principles and to those precepts and to those commandments and you are watching you know that you must run according to the rule according to the word of the lord if you're going to win so run that he may obtain and every man there's no exception some people think if i leave this church and go to that other church i will not hear anything about the cross anything about self-discipline anything about consecration anything about absolute surrender and then i can just enjoy my christian life every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure and he says over here every man that striveth for the victory for triumph for the mastery is temperate in all things that's what temperate means that you are subdued that's what temperate means you are self-controlled that temperate means that it's not everything that occurs to you just say anything that occurs just go there anything that occurs just do it there is this temperance the self-control and it says anyone that is striving for the mastery you cannot just do as you please if you're striving for the mastery it's like the soldier in the army is striving for the mastery it's like the athlete on the field is striving for the mastery there is control what you eat what you drink when you sleep when you wake up who your friends are what you put on what you don't put on where you go where you don't go what to stuff your mind with what to stuff your brain with you are temperate and you are self-controlled in all things and it says in that verse 25 no now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible i therefore this is paul the apostle 
I therefore, this is the one that has gone to the third heaven, come back. I therefore, this is the one that has seen the paradise. I therefore, this is the one that has the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, commissioned by the Lord. And if that man could not be careless, how about you? The one who has gone to heaven and come back who has seen angel and heard angels speak if you cannot be careless how about you there's some people that think that it doesn't matter what i do it doesn't matter where i go it doesn't matter how i dress it doesn't matter about anything i'm saved i'm saved it's more than that it says i therefore so run not as uncertainly and so fight i not as one that beated the air but I keep my body under apostle I keep my body under a preacher I keep my body under a child of God I keep my body under a spirit filled man speaking in tongues but he said I keep my I keep my body under such a privileged child of God Paul the apostle greater than all the other apostles put together he said i put my body under and bring it into subjection lest by any means when i have preached to others when i minister to others i myself should be a cast away it's just telling us a simple thing there is the cross there is the self-denial there is the self-discipline before the crown let's listen to the words of jesus christ in matthew chapter 16 Matthew chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Here is what Christ said. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If any man will follow after me, let him deny himself. I'm going to ask you a question. Look at your life. What can you say? since you became a christian what can you say now that you claim to be a christian what are you denying yourself of the people of the world there are things they do they're self-indulgent they indulge themselves and the christian the one who is following after christ the lord jesus christ said if any man is going to follow me if you are not just religious like all those people out there are religious if you are not just here for fun if you are not just hearing about heaven about our eternal destiny only for fun if you make up your mind you want to follow christ until the very end until you get to heaven jesus christ said in that verse 24 if any man will come after me let him deny himself since you came to this retreat your father word of god your prayer, you said oh lord do this do this what have you denied yourself of what are you thinking of after this retreat i'll deny myself of that because it's going to hinder me from getting to heaven i'll deny myself of this because it's going to hinder my usefulness in the kingdom of god that is what it takes and then jesus said and it takes up the cross it takes up the cross and then it follows me you cannot effectively follow the lord who bore the cross if you are not bearing your cross there is a cross and that cross cancels out every self-indulgence in your life that you become a militant child of god a triumphant child of god you're not an indulgent person a careless person a fleshly person a worldly person all those things you cast aside and you deny yourself of them and then you bear the cross the cross might be heavy and the cross might be something that cancels self and he can so sin and can so the thing you try you want to enjoy but he says you bear that cross and you follow after him and he says if you don't do that you're just an observer in the kingdom of god you're not a real child of god because he says if you are going to be my disciple my real follower he says you are going to bear your cross mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 34 mark chapter 8 verse 34 and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me whosoever 
Uh, do, do you know that there are some people they give themselves liberty they say well i cannot uh, you know follow the word of god and be strict and be narrow-minded and then keep to that holiness of life i'm an apostle they say i'm a bishop and they think the higher they go the cooler they become they think the higher they go the more liberty they have to be able to do anything whatever but jesus christ said that if anybody an apostle a bishop a preacher a pastor a general superintendent a general overseer any leader any worker and a member of the church of course it says if anyone is going to follow after me we don't take cloths into our hands i've graduated from obeying the word of god i've graduated from you know looking at that word you can go and control those little ones and those young people but this is my position now it doesn't count it says whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and let him take up his cross and follow me i pray god will open our eyes to this truth in jesus name mark chapter 10 mark chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 21 let me tell the background it was a rich young man that ran after jesus and knelt down and he said master good master what shall i do to inherit the kingdom of god and then jesus gave him the word i want to you know uh, help you to understand jesus has just one standard of the word of god and jesus is no respecter of persons you know as we are here we are from different classes in society some of us are moderate some of us are ordinary some of us are very very high we have some of us who have come from university we are professors we have some of us who have come from the uh, political circle and we have great office over there and when we get to our office uh, you know some of us will say your excellency and we respect you and we bow before you when we come to the kingdom of god it is the same standard god doesn't have two standards for the kingdom of god there are some churches they will not tell about they will not tell the rich people repentance about restitution about righteousness because they think that he's a great man he's a highly placed he's an highly placed man and because he's highly placed they're not going to tell the truth to them and then in our own church here we have the people called the ifl and then sometimes when you listen to you know the people that go to talk to them the ifl they water down the gospel so much that there is no cross for the ifl member to carry and there is no self-denial for the people that are high and somebody says i'm a chief i'm a king i'm an oba i'm an ubi in my territory and then they come and the preachers are so grateful that this great man has come and they will not tell them the truth of the word of god and then when they come to us ordinary people they lash us they give us the word except you repent you will likewise perish but that's for everybody and so this great man this rich man this highly placed man came to the lord and he, he wanted to know what shall i do to enter the kingdom of god look at verse 21 then jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him one thing thou lackest go thy way sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up thy cross rich man take up thy cross professor take up thy cross kings and princes take up thy cross this so highly placed look at this man here the lord jesus christ did not miss words he told him this is what it takes to get into the kingdom of god and that's what the lord is telling us tonight there is the cross before the crown and it says take up thy cross and follow me look at verse 22 and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions and jesus looked around about and says unto his disciples how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of god when the man went back jesus did not change 
the standard of the world, the necessity of carrying the cross, of taking the cross, of bearing the cross, before we can win the crown. There are many people, there are many preachers. Once they see that the rich people are not coming, highly pleased people are not coming, they're saying that is too tough, that is too hard. The word of God is too hard for them. They cannot accept the word of God. They go back. There are some preachers that will say, we better modify this scene. Why would you do that? To get them to come in you're going to have a crowd not a church you're not good you're going to have people that are religious but not righteous people are not ready to get to heaven jesus did not change the standard of the word of god and jesus christ is still the same yesterday today and forever if we're going to get to the kingdom of god it says anyone whosoever will follow after me will take up his cross will deny himself and will follow me i pray god will give you the grace to do that in jesus name after all what are we calling great men great men for only 50 years only 20 years only 30 years in the world and then in eternity forever and ever suffering in the in the lake of fire what's it what about that but if you will humble yourself today and say lord i know you are not going to lower your standard i know that you are going to maintain the word of god because you are ever true and faithful to your word and i want to get to heaven i submit and it is when you submit yourself to the teaching of the lord jesus christ you become a disciple of jesus and by the grace of god will make it in jesus name and then the disciples were astonished at his word but jesus answered again and said unto them children how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of god it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of god the point is the lord jesus christ emphasized that we need to bear the cross one and all young and old there is a cross that you have to bear and then you look at your life and the lord is saying you have to deny yourself you have to give up something and it is when you give up all those things the lord is requesting from you that you say lord whatever it takes whatever difficulties or challenges whatever trial whatever temptation i'm going to make sure that i plow through in the grace of god and then on the final day there'll be a crown waiting for you in jesus name give me a good amen don't sleep luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 23 luke chapter 9 verse 23 and he said unto them unto them all no exception it says if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross what's the next word there daily and follow me there may be a challenge you face every day in the office but that's a cross because you are not trying to do the fraudulent thing with them then they are they're kind of uh, you know putting their mouths and putting their eyes on you persecution slander and then they talk against you and they persecute you but every day you just go there and do your work and you take your stand because jesus christ said if we're going to win the crown on the final day whatever people do and whatever people say however they act however they do not act every day you bear your cross and you deny yourself so that you'll be able to get there and i pray you will get there in philippians in philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 will see the example and the model of the lord jesus christ himself philippians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus you want to get to heaven have the mind of christ you want to win the crown have the mind of christ his sacrifice his humility his self-denial and the way he bore the cross it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god such it not robbery to be equal with god but he made himself of no reputation and he took upon him the form of a servant and he was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself what did he do i said what did he do he humbled himself can you humble yourself are you so great in your own estimate 
woman so high that we cannot submit to the word of God we want to get to heaven he humbled himself Christ the second person in the Trinity he humbled himself and the Lord is saying we should have that same mind that same attitude that we bent low and we bend our knees and bend our hearts and our mind before the word of God. It says in that verse 8, Be found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. The death of the cross. That's why the Lord is telling us that we need to also allow cell to die on the cross that we are bearing. In Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. God forbid that I should be proud. God forbid that you should be proud, full of yourself. You want to deny that self, humble yourself, bend low by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you say, oh Lord, do not allow ever in my life such pride and such infilling of self that I cannot recognize the demand of heaven upon my life. That says, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Hebrews chapter 11 Those who have gone before us And those who follow the Lord before us They realize there must be the cross before the crown we Want to win the conqueror's crown But then we bear the cross Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24 By faith Moses When he was come to years Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter Can I explain that to you? In Egypt, Pharaoh was a king And the one that was heir to the throne Should be a son of Pharaoh But that Pharaoh at that time had no son Had a daughter And this daughter picked up Moses And then adopted Moses as her son and so the result will be that Moses would have been king a Pharaoh in Egypt, being the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Since a lady, a woman, could not be a Pharaoh. And then when Moses knew that, he said, No, I'm going to take up my cross. I'm going to deny myself of that kind of political office in Egypt because I know God has a demand upon my life. Can you give up anything like that? Position, royalty, for example, royalty that will lead you into idolatry in your village, in your community, your local government, your tribe. They want to make you a chief. And you know that if you become a chief there, although the royalty will be there, the position will be there, you are going to get into idolatry. You know you'll not be able to escape it. And then you say, I'm sorry, I cannot take that. That will be like Moses. He said, I cannot take that because it will compromise my conviction in the Lord. It may be in your place of work. They're saying that they're going to promote you. But if they're going to promote you, you must join their society. And then they make that society look something like modern and social. But internally there, you know, there's initiation. They're going to initiate you. But they say, if we initiate you, you are going to have this position. And then you are concerned, what do I do now? If I take this position, more money and more prestige, royalty, they look at me up there. But you are going to make, you are going to sell your soul into the hands of the devil. You reject it. It may be in another place that, you know, the people, they say you are going to be part of this and part of that. It will give you a great name. A great prestige and then you say i reject that because this is my cross look at that again in verse 24 by faith moses when he was when he was come to years he refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter look at this in verse 25 choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season there are some things that are pleasant to the flesh 
but they are deadly to the soul there are some things that appear like they are pleasures to your flesh it for a temporary time but it will get you into hell fire that's the reason why you say no i'd rather get rid of that i reject that and then i'll be lowly i'll be humble i'll not allow anything like that to lead me to hell fire we're told in verse 26 esteeming the reproach of christ the cross of christ greater riches than the treasures of egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward by faith he forsook egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seen him who was who is invisible that's what the lord is telling us that if we're going to win the crown at all then we must bear the cross think about that in your life what are you denying yourself of what cross are you bearing so that you can wear the crown on the final day point number two now the consecration of the conqueror the consecration of the conqueror if we're going to conquer we cannot take all these baggages uh, be, uh, you know behind us and just carry this and carry that there are things we have to leave aside set aside and say that cannot be part of my life if you're really me you want to serve the lord you want to worship the lord and you want to win the crown on the final day there is the consecration of the conqueror let's see what the apostles said we're looking at mark chapter 10 verse 28 mark chapter 10 and i'm reading from verse 28 mark 10 verse 28 here is what it says then peter began to say unto him lo we have left all and i follow thee that's the consecration there is something to leave behind my brother my sister we have left all and we have followed thee and i'm going to ask you again what have you left behind i'm a christian now i'm born again now i'm called to salvation i'm called to separation i'm called to sacrifice i'm called to sanctification and to service what have you left behind look at your life what is it that you know you are not enjoying that other people are enjoying are you not the same with the people of the world whatever our cause to you pick it up not deny yourself of anything the apostle said we have left all and we have followed thee and then the lord gave them look at the answer in verse 29 and jesus answered and said verily i say unto you there is no man that has left home house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake and the gospel do you see list of things there the closest relationship to us father and mother son and daughter husband or wife that if they contradict the word if they will not go along with you and encourage you in the conviction that you have you say oh lord for the sake of heaven i'm willing to give up anything and everything that's the cross we're talking about and that is the consecration that you love jesus christ above your mother above your father above your daughter above your son above your brothers above your sisters above your wife above your husband you know all this kind of cc christianity effeminate christianity my dear my dear my darling and then we're compromising the watch of god we cannot take a stand and say hey listen to me woman if we're going to be together here is the promise i made to the lord i'm going to serve the lord with all my heart all my soul and all my mind and there is no compromise in that i knew the lord before i knew you and therefore you take your stand and jesus said that those who have left home and lands and property and they left husband and wife or they left their children or they left their father and their mother they are the people that are going to get the reward of the kingdom but you know this kind of compromising attitude that people have today that they bench the word of god to please a man or to please a woman we don't find that in the new testament and i pray that god will bring us back to new testament conviction in jesus name give me a good amen if you believe that look at luke chapter 14 luke chapter 14 here are the words of jesus christ he is our savior 
He's a Lord. He's a forerunner. He's the captain of our salvation. And here is what he says. We must love him above any relationship here on earth. If we don't do that, we're not qualified. We're not fit to be his disciple. I'm looking at Luke chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father, you see that, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. What the Lord Jesus is saying is this if you are not committed, if you are not consecrated if you don't make jesus number one in your life and everybody else comes as number two or number three or number 10 or number 20 if you make anybody number one in your life and then you make jesus number two he says i'm not going to accept that that anyone that is going to follow after me your your mother will come as number two your father will come as number two your wife your husband will come as number two and jesus christ will be the king of kings and the lord of lords in your life you know sometimes we carry this family relationship too far my husband my husband my husband and then your husband is demanding something that is not according to the word of god making it to disrespect to dishonor and to disobey the lord jesus christ and then you're still flowing on i don't want to rock the boat i want to keep my home i want to make sure that my my husband does not look at another woman because of that i will do whatever he says no if you're going to be a christian a disciple of the lord jesus christ jesus christ himself said if any man come to me and hate not father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters he is so very live also it will cost you something it says if that is not so you will not be his disciple and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple i pray that you will not give up your faith i said you'll not give up your faith and you know some of us before you got married you are fervent for the lord and zealous for the lord you're obedient to the word of god you are humble you are controllable and your life was transformed after the marriage now we can't understand you we can't know we don't know where you're going we don't know what to ask you is again workers meeting uh, well my my darling said i cannot give all that time to jesus it is too much church 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 every time and then there is the retreat and you have been coming to it for how many years now 10 years 15 years 20 years where were you sleeping when you were coming and now you are married and your dear wife said is that where we're going to stay at that retreat i cannot go there if you love me and you are my darling if you are my honey then you cannot attend the retreat now let us go and spend this festive period at home you say well my darling i cannot say no to you but i can say no to jesus shame on you i said shame on you give me a good amen, amen. a person that is following doing to follow jesus will say hey come on i've been attending that retreat for 15 years for 20 years and that is what has made my life what i am and you come into my life you tell me not to go to that retreat please if you want to go you can go home but i am going to be at that retreat and thank god that is why you are here i say thank god that is why you are here and forever forever until jesus comes you will take your stand for the lord in jesus name and you know sometimes it's not even husband and wife it is between the leader and the workers in the church and i want you i love you workers i appreciate your workers and i respect you and i honor you and i really appreciate the great work you are doing for the lord in the kingdom but sometimes a worker becomes so full of himself that the worker is saying well pastor you know what this is not 1977 this is not 1992 this is a new century and if we're going to be workers in the church and be our best you must drop this doctrine drop that doctrine drop that doctrine we drop the doctrine for you so we can keep church going on and miss heaven you think i'm going to miss heaven because of you never 
that's what the lord said that we even hate our very life if we have to suffer we suffer for righteousness sake so that we will keep the ticket the lord has given us for heaven and if you're going to get to heaven the doctrine you met in the church was he going to stand on that doctrine until jesus comes in jesus name I'm, I'm sure you don't want your pastor to compromise just because of you to please you and displease the lord and to bend to you and the son of the lord i'm sure you don't want something like that you don't want your pastor you don't want your leader to exalt you whoever you are above the lord jesus christ you want to say let jesus be the king of your life let him be the lord of your life and the master of your life and then we keep the standard where christ has given it unto us and we're going to abide in that truth until the very end in jesus name and that's what the word of god is saying that we die to self we die to self we do not allow all the sakes of the world to shift us from our base and from our conviction so that by the grace of god until he comes we're standing on the word on the unchanging watch of god i'm looking at john chapter 6 john chapter 6 we're looking at verse 60 john chapter 6 verse 16 many therefore of his disciples when they heard this said this is an hard saying who can hear this this is an hard saying who can hear this you know when they heard the word of god bear your cross take up your cross deny yourself follow after me all the things of the world throw them away and live with conviction the way he wants you to live when they heard they, they just said it's too much we cannot abide by that look at verse 66 from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him from that time when they had the real standard and demand of the kingdom many of his disciples said we cannot take that and they went back what did jesus do they say oh i'm sorry why did you misunderstand me i didn't mean that and then water everything down modify everything oh it's not so serious it's not as demanding as that come back no not jesus i pray you will be like jesus i said i pray you'll be like jesus how i pray that every preacher in this our little church will be like jesus in jesus name how i pray that every overseer in this our church will be like the lord jesus christ will lift up the standard and whoever agrees whoever does not agree you're not looking for people to love you and appreciate you at the expense of people getting to heaven whoever agrees whoever does not agree you are standing upon the watch of god because here is the consecration of the conqueror look at the next verse in verse 67 here is what jesus said jesus said unto the twelve will you also go away we also go away others are going away others say the standard is too high others say this demand of holiness is too much for them they cannot abide and they're going will you also go away look at verse 68 then simon peter answered him lord to whom shall we go thou hast the word of eternal life and we believe and assure that thou art the christ the son of the living god that's similar to what ruth said look at ruth chapter one ruth chapter one the demand the, the challenge will come to you like it came to ruth like it came to all these disciples that even your pastor might say well that's the standard that's the word of god will you stay or will you go you know these pastors that are begging people to serve the lord they're begging people they okay we'll manage we'll tolerate that that's what you want okay and go ahead with that you don't want to bend to the word of all right don't 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 disturb the don't disturb the boat just go ahead with the work you're doing there's nothing like that in the bible in the bible they laid up the standard and they raised up the standard and then they will even ask them do you want to follow do you want to go do you want to stay or do you want to run away and the people that really want to get to heaven they are the people that said 
this is the word where can we find something like this we're going to abide by that word and those are the people the conquerors that will win the crown on the final day and i pray that you too you will win the crown in jesus name look at ruth chapter one i'm reading there from verse 15 ruth chapter one we're reading from verse 15 and she said, it's not me not talking to Ruth. Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Hey, that is not motivational. That's not encouraging. Now me said, Ruth, what are you doing following after me? You can return after all the only person you know we're going to strength land we're going to the land of israel and your sister-in-law is gone back you can return i give you permission to return look at verse 16 and ruth said entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for whither thou goest i will go and where thou lodgest i will lodge thy people shall be my people and thy god my god i pray that god will give you that consistency and commitment and consecration in jesus name and it says in verse 17 where thou diest will i die and there will i be buried the lord do so to me and more also if aught but death part thee and me when she saw that she was set firstly minded to go with her she, that then she left speaking unto her that's the consecration the lord demands today and i pray that you'll be able to give yourself your heart your mind your life totally without reservation unto the lord and move on with the lord in jesus name in john chapter 12 john chapter 12 i'm reading there from verse 24 here are the words of jesus christ the demand he makes upon the people that say they are following after the lord john chapter 12 12 i'm reading from verse 24 verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die self except it dies self-will except it dies my own mind except it dies what i like what i don't like except it dies it says except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit he that loveth his life shall lose it he that loves his life and you are petting yourself and you're taking care of yourself and you're touching this and touching that and taking care of this and taking care of that and you're so sensitive cannot preach the word of god to you if we quote the bible you're offended if we apply the bible you're offended if we make any illustration you're offended why did they talk like that don't they know i'm here if you don't hate yourself and say that kind of pride and self-will inside me that is trying to assert itself when the preaching of the word of god is going on that self will must die if we're going to get to the kingdom of god that's why jesus said he that loveth his life shall lose it and he that hateth his life in this war shall keep it unto life eternal if any man sub me let him follow me and where i am there shall also my servant be if any man sub me him will my father honor i pray that you'll have this in your life in jesus name we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 20 acts of the apostles chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 22 acts chapter 20 verse 22 and now behold i go bound in the spirit unto jerusalem not knowing the things that shall befall me there save that the holy ghost witnesses in every city saying the bounds and afflictions abide me but look at verse 24 but none of these things move me neither count i my life dear unto myself so that i might finish my course with joy he said what's important to me is to finish my race with joy what's important to me is to finish my course with joy i'm committed to that he said about my physical body 
forget about that about pleasure forget about that about convenience or comfort forget about that he says what's important to me is so that on the final day i'll get to that heaven i will wear the crown and you're going to win and wear the crown in jesus name that's why he said and the ministry which i have received of the lord jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of god galatians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 20 galatians chapter 2 what reading in verse 20 galatians 2 verse 20 i'm crucified with christ the self-life has to be crucified i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the face of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me you see the demand of the christian life the commitment the consecration the absolute surrender that we lay everything we have we lay it on the altar and we say lord all for you all for you completely and whatever you demand of me lord i'm crucified with christ and now the life i now live i live by the faith of the son of god because he loved me and gave himself for me second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 we're reading from verse 11 it's a faithful saying if will be dead with him we also we shall also live with him dead 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 with him let the self-life die let that propensity you let it die the one that wants to assert your authority let it die and say lord let all this die and let me live for you and for you alone look at verse 12 if we suffer we shall also reign with him if we deny him i pray you'll not deny him i said i pray you'll not deny him if we deny him he also will deny us if we believe not yet he abided faithful he cannot deny himself we're looking at philippians chapter 3 let's see the consecration of paul what your consecration ought to be the commitment of paul what your commitment ought to be in philippians chapter 3 verse 7 but what things were gained unto me those i counted loss for christ paul the apostle could mention them one by one his position in the jewish religion his authority of the jewish senate and all the things that he had he said i had to give them up so i can follow christ can you point to anything in your life you have given up anything profitable anything that makes you like a vip you have to give it up and he said that you know puts you up there you have to give up that's what paul the apostle did that's the consecration that's the absolute surrender what it wants us to lay down so that we'll be able to hear the kingdom he said what things were gain unto me those i counted laws for christ yea doubtless in verse 8 i count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dog that i may win christ and the reward that will follow christ i come to number three now that's the cor our coronation and our crown our coronation and our crown we're looking at revelation chapter three revelation chapter three i'm reading to you from verse 11. revelation chapter 3 verse 11 behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown what you have is this whole fast so that nobody will take your crown nobody will take your crown in jesus name if you have been a christian for maybe five years now and then something has just come to your life and then you let go of your consecration of your commitment of your obedience to the word of god and of your vigilance over the doctrines of the word of god because of something that just came into your life and just because of this little thing you're not holding on until the very end will you be a wise man or a foolish man you can think of that yourself if you've been a christian for 20 years for 25 years for 30 years and then you just got something now and then because of this and you know maybe it's money that 
that is coming in maybe it's property coming maybe it's political position coming in or whatever it is coming in in your life and because of this new thing that comes into your life all the commitment and all the decisions of 30 years and 40 years or 50 years in the lord you just throw them overboard because of this little thing that just came how wise are you and how foolish should you be you want to be wise unto life eternal and you want to be able to say you have been following after the lord and now no one will take your crown away from you in jesus name we don't know when the lord jesus christ will come it might come today it might come tomorrow it might come this year before the year runs out it might come next year and everything you laid upon the altar like jephthah i've opened my mouth to the lord and i will not turn back you want to tell the lord oh lord nothing will take my reward nothing will take my crown i've laid everything on the altar and what you have always believed the totality of the word of god from cover to cover and you want to practice that and lay by that that you want to tell the lord oh lord nothing will hinder my going to that heaven and my winning that crown on the final day it is only then if you are holding on to the very end you'll be able to win your crown in jesus name and you'll win that crown in the mighty name of jesus i'm looking at revelation chapter 2 verse 10 revelation chapter 2 verse 10 it says fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that she may be tried and that she may have tribulation only 10 days a short time only 10 days a, a brief time only 10 days but says be thou faithful unto death and i will give you what a crown of life when you are faithful unto death until the very end know that you are very you are so very hot and fervent at the beginning of your christian life and now that you you know after two years and after five years or ten years twenty years then you slow down i cannot be running like i used to run why not why not moses ran until the very end enoch ran until the very end joshua ran until the very end and paul the apostle ran until the very end and he kept their conviction to the very end daniel kept the conviction until the very end the same God that helped them in those days come by will help you in Jesus name so that it's not at the middle of the road you are going to you are going to be quenched and then you are going to die off like smoke but you'll go on to the very end in jesus name isn't that what the lord has told us in matthew chapter matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 i'm reading there from verse 11 matthew chapter 24 we're reading from verse 11 and many false prophets shall arise and shall this and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound because iniquity shall abound the love of many not everybody the love of many my own my own love will not wax cold i said my love will not wax cold that you remain fervent and zealous and consecrated and committed to the very end and it says because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure until when until the end the same shall be saved that's what the lord is bringing to us today the lord says remember where you began how you got saved remember how you began how you made restitutions remember how you began how you suffered persecution remember how you began how you prayed until you were sanctified holy through and through remember how you began and you laid everything upon the altar and because of the lord has honored you to now be in this particular place and he said hold fast what brought you here hold fast what you've done with the lord hold fast the commit consecration you made to the lord until the very end it says that is how we're going to win the crown and i pray that you and i will, will win the crown in jesus name i'm going to end with what we started in first corinthians chapter 9 first corinthians chapter 9 i'm reading there from verse 24 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that he may obtain so run that he may obtain while you are running don't leave your conviction behind so run that he may obtain while you are running don't leave the doctrines behind all the doctrines of the bible accept everything embrace everything 
hold everything very dear put it near your heart the doctrines of the bible while you're running if you are running and then you leave all the doctrines behind no more sanctification no more holiness no more restitution no more righteousness only running and running that will be useless but so run that she may obtain every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible i therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight i not as one that beateth the air but i keep my body under can you keep that body under answer me i said will you keep that body under your eyes control it control them your ears control them what you hear your mouth what you say put it under control and in your mind what you're thinking about put that under control and all the different parts of your body what you do with your body what you touch what you receive put that under control that's what paul the apostle said he said because i'm always having that goal in front of me that heaven in front of me he says i keep my body under and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i have preached to others i myself should be a castaway i pray for myself i will not be a castaway i said i pray for myself i will not be a castaway whatever it will take whatever it will take to make that heaven my final destination i want to be able to say oh lord help me and grant me the grace to surrender everything in your hands so that that final destination i'll make it and i'm going to make it in jesus name you want to tell the lord that whatever it will take the flesh will try to oppose you your friends may try to oppose you family members may try to oppose you but you are telling the lord whatever it will take for me to get to that heaven and to win the crown on that final day oh lord help me i'm going to go on and endure to the very end rise up and tell the lord whatever it will take that the lord will help you you know be blindfolded by the things of this world you will go on and on and on until that coronation day open your mouth and pray unto the lord if you're going to win the crown there is the cross to bear are you trying to kind of leave the cross behind those difficulties and those challenges you're trying to leave them behind what would you tell the lord oh lord i know the standard of the word the demand of the word deny yourself bear the cross follow the word while you're running the race don't leave the doctrines of the bible behind i just say i'm running i'm running i'm walking for god i'm serving the lord and in the cross you're not bearing that cross deny yourself you're not denying yourself you're saying oh lord i want to come back to the original word consecration commitment separation from the world and to give myself completely unto you i don't want anything i don't want anyone to hinder me from taking that from getting to that glory tell the lord give yourself fully to the lord salvation sets us free from sin and then you're following the lord you bear the cross as for grace as for the grace of god whatever difficulties challenges persecution pressure that will stand on the word of the living god that is what it will take to win the crown the conqueror's crown the captives don't have any crown those who are defeated in life don't have any crown those who are yielding to temptation here and there they don't have any crown but the people who endure the people who deny themselves 
the people who take up the cross the people who allow self to die and the people who are willing to give up anything that will hinder them from getting to heaven those are the people that are committed to the lord consecrated to the lord and those are the people that are going to win the crown the final day where do you stand well some people heard that word they said it's an hard saying who can receive this and they went back and jesus said will you also go away you want to tell the lord to whom shall we go thou hast the word of eternal life you want to say lord help me lord help me lord help me to endure to the very end to bear my cross to the very end to live in holiness righteousness purity of heart and life to the very end don't pick up false doctrine in the middle of the road many false prophets shall arise and deceive many and because iniquity shall abound corruption shall abound compromise shall abound the love of many shall was cold but he but she that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved endure to the end continue to the very end only do so endure to the end only those who endure to the end the same shall be saved are you finding things hard today what you used to find easy you used to find reading the word of god easy now it's tough and difficult to read the bible you used to find it easy to pray now you are finding it tough and hard to pray you used to find it easy to lay everything on the altar all to jesus i surrender those days it was easy at that time you find that difficult today you used to find it easy to give up all those materials that spell worldliness in your life when you knew the lord and you find that hard and difficult Why don't you say, Lord, take me back to where I used to be, where I laid everything on the altar, where I consecrated everything unto you, where I died to sell, where my will was swallowed up in your will. Take me back there. Take me back to the place I never argued with you take me back to the place i was like cruz that nothing will drive me back from following after the lord you're finding it easy today to still surrender everything and yield everything Do you find it easy today to be corrected you found that easy many years ago when you first became a believer it was easy to correct you brother this is not right oh i'm sorry i didn't know sister this is not right i'm sorry i didn't know are you still like that today was position become like intoxicating alcohol making you drunk drunk with power drunk with position 
Why don't you tell the Lord, O oh Lord, take me back to where I began with you. Take me back to where I began with you. When the only thing I thought about was getting to heaven. The only thing I thought about was pleasing my Lord, obeying my Lord. The only thing I thought about was carrying the cross, bearing the cross, denying myself, seeing my Lord in heaven, seeing Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the apostles and the saints of God in heaven. That's the only thing you thought about in those days. What are you thinking about today? Why don't you say, Lord, I come back again. Lord, I come back again. Lord, I come back again. Not position, not privilege, nothing else. My goal is heaven. And the Lord says, if your goal is heaven, there is the cross before the crown. There is the cross before the crown and there is the consecration of the conqueror do you remember David I will not offer anything to the Lord that cost me nothing costly sacrifice costly consecration do you remember Jephthah I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, I cannot go back. Do you remember Peter? We have left all and we have followed thee. Do you remember Paul the Apostle? The things that were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. You remember the Lord Jesus Christ himself? He never compromised with the Pharisees or the Sadducees. All he wanted to do was to please his father. Is that all you want to do? I do always the things that please him, the one that sent me. I do always. I do always. And you want to do always the things that please the Father. You want to exalt Christ above your own joy, above your happiness, above your pleasure, above your desires want to exalt Christ above father above mother above wife above husband exalt Christ above son or daughter above anybody on earth whatever you lose whatever you gain Christ must be all in all in your life. 